Hey there guys, Headphones Neil here, back with a quick uh, review. Just because this past weekend I had the inkling to rewatch the Iron Man trilogy, just to see how they hold up, how the films hold up, and how they hold up in relation to each other. Generally, outside of the MCU, see if they can be watched as standalone films and all of that good stuff. So I did rewatch them in order, and I found them particularly enjoyable, especially since. For the most part, they do stand out. Um, you do have agencies like S.H.I.E.L.D. showing up and references to, like Nick Fury says, that he has other issues to worry about in the southern sector or southeastern sector, or southwestern corner, something like that. Um, he makes note that Tony Stark's not the center of his universe. And even people like Coulson who show up and we get the idea that S.H.I.E.L.D. is a bigger organization and they have, and that. Iron Man and Tony Stark are not generally the center of their universe. So while things like that make sense, even as their own um, standalone films, it makes sense because for me, it would lead me to believe that they handle more than just elements in the United States or even around the world that could potentially be a threat. So along those lines of films do work very well. As an overarching thread between the three films, they generally work just because things to note that I noticed this time around especially are things like in the first film, um, the lesson to learn was something along the lines of Stark taking control of his life and not being so reckless with it that he learns from um, Yasin, the guy who was in captivity with. Um, in the second film, it's it was a twofold um, lesson that I learned. One being the um, paying for the sins of our fathers and um, taking handling the threat of your own ego gone crazy. So the sins of the father. The father is the movie storyline with um, Anton Venko and his father um, feeling like they got ousted because of Tony Stark's dad um, and what they did with the arc reactor. And then the ego gone wild is Tony himself having a big ego, worrying about his, um, having a, basically an existential crisis about his life and losing one of the suits to his best friend, Rhodey. And then the third film is along the lines of, um, it was also twofold in one being the PTSD. So while they do hark on the events of the Avengers with the wormhole, it could just as easily be referencing the P PTSD of Tony Stark's captivity in the cave and not actually truly coming to terms with it, even though he came back bigger and stronger. It was one of those things where he was, he created the Iron Man suit to move forward and get rid of those threats, but not dealing with it on a personal level, but then also um, falling in love with Pepper Potts and dealing with that and having to the stress of loss of someone he actually truly cares about and not feeling like he did enough to uh, keep her. So I did enjoy them. Like I said, they are worth watching overall. Um, I don't necessarily want to say that any of the films are better or worse than each other. I know that people have arguments about whether two and three are, which, which one of two and three are better, but I actually like them quite a bit. I know that and from my memory that the Mandarin storyline didn't quite deal handle well with the comics or tie well with the comics but I found that on its own it generally worked very well and the idea of um, Aldrich Killian using a stage actor to create a villain works well for villains in general for comic books because he did what he needed to do to get ahead and create the anonymity for him to rise, even though he might have risen faster than he expected, but he didn't quite expect Stark to be the engineer that he was, especially with the help from the kid. But being an engineer and just solving for problems created the um, scenario that Stark needed to survive and ultimately win the day, even though he did allow Shelly also need help from... Uh, Pepper in her, um, the, whatever the fire breathe, the extra, in, or Pepper Potts in extremist mode, but then also Stark being Stark and having all his suits to come help him save the day. So, all in all, I found it to be a very good trilogy and found that it was very tightly done. So, they work well even after all these years, work watching them as a trilogy and outside of the MCU. So, that's all there is for this particular review. So, next up, I'm 
thinking that I'm going to watch um, the Captain America trilogy. So Captain America, the first Avenger, Captain America, Winter Soldier, and Captain America, Civil War, to see how those hold up and see how that, from my memory and just general spitballing, that it's probably going to be one of those things to bring the make that bridge between the Iron Man trilogy and the rest of the MCU as Captain America being the um, br- the the bridge to build connect the two because we do see um, Stark being po- introduced to the Avengers initiative and then Captain America being the first Avenger that makes that stepping stone a little bit easier and we get a lot more characters and their backstories. So that's all there is for this review. Um, and prior to that Captain America trilogy review, there is going to be the um, Lego Star Wars Holiday Special, which releases on Disney Plus on November 17th, so look out for that coming soon. Um, and, it was, and of course, more um, play, gameplay videos for Stranger Things 3 on Android. Um, and in general, if you um, want to keep a track of what I'm up to in uh, recent posts and, or want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this review, and until next time.